In the next problem, the total area of the sides of a cube is going to change from 69 to 2. And we're going to ask what's the proportion of the sides of the cube, the lengths of the sides. Now, we know that the area is proportional to the square of the side, okay, because areas are proportional to the squares of linear dimensions so that the side is going to be proportional to the square root of the area. And this is the reasoning step that we're going to make. We don't even have to write k's and so forth. We just say if area is proportional to the square of something, then that something's proportional to the square root of the area. So we can write x equals k times a to the one-half. The side is proportional to the one-half power of the square root of the area. And this tells us that x2 over x1, the ratio of the sides is just going to be the square root of the ratio of the areas or the one-half power of the ratio of the areas. We get from this to this in the usual manner by writing x2 equals ka2 to the one-half, x1 equals ka1 to the one-half, dividing the two and simplifying it. And we're not going to write that step out every time because by now we should be used to that step and we should be able to take it in our heads and not have to write out all the details. Although we should be able to write out all the details anytime we're a little bit confused and make sure that we understand exactly what we're doing. In any case, the ratio of the sides then will be the square root of the ratio of the areas. The area ratio is 2 over 69, and we can take that to the one-half power and get a number. In the next problem, uh, this is problem 5. By what factor does the volume of a cube change if its area changes from 71 to 5? Um, and actually, I think I just misstated that because I don't think... Yeah, let's pretend that we didn't see that. We're just going to cross that out because I think that I started to do this problem and then realized I'd misread it. So we're going to address that problem again in a minute. Uh, that problem concerns what happens to the volumes if we know what happens to the areas, or what happens to the areas if we know what happens to the volumes. That's a little more complicated situation, and we'll look at that in a minute, so just ignore this.